lifespan of nonprofit program evaluation. This is a sample lifespan of program evaluations. You first start with the needs assessment. Does a social problem exist? If so, a proposal is made on how to intervene. Uh, formative evaluations are used to adjust and enhance intervention in the beginning of a program's life. Process evaluations, fine-tune services focusing on implementation. Outcome evaluations uh, gauge the amount and direction of change in a client before and after intervention. And cost analysis evaluations study the efficiency of a program, cost to benefits evaluation. Needs assessments uh, may sometimes be done for existing programs looking to add intervention modalities, um, like an expansion to MICA, if you will, uh, aids decision making in resource allocation, program planning, and program development. Uh, want is defined as uh, pe what people are willing to pay for, demand is what people are willing to fight for, and a need is defined as the basic requirement to sustain the human condition. Uh, with need, you're breaking it down into perceived needs and expressed needs. Normative need is defined by an expert, uh, like a federal poverty level of $11,770 for one, and then you add $4,000 per person more. Felt need is defined by the self, a feeling of poverty despite being above that line. Express need is, uh, is the official request for services by clients. And comparative need is determined by those receiving services versus those who don't, infer inferring one population's needs to another population's. These are some of the questions answered by needs assessments pertaining to demographics. What does the community look like? Timeliness, are existing services outdated? What are current pressing needs? History, have needs changed over time? Demand, gaps in existing services? What are the weaknesses in the community? What are the strengths in the community? And the resources available in the community versus what's needed in the community. Formative evaluations are done at the beginning of a program, not before, but at the beginning. Uh, they seek to influence initial development of program. They identify strengths and weaknesses of a new program. Interviews with staff, clients, agency records, participant observations, different ways to do uh, formative evaluations. You've got uh, locating model standards versus getting expert consultation versus forming committees. Once a program has been established, then you conduct process evaluations. And a process evaluation uh, fine-tunes services so that interventions are most effective. Formative, eva formative evaluations influence initial development, but process evaluations can be done at any time, even at the end of a program's life. Program monitoring is the program uh, asks, rather, is the program doing what it was designed to do? Program objectives are uh, defined and stated in such a way as to place the activity into a specific target date and into a, uh, rather, the activity into a specific target and to a date. So you might say something like increasing admissions 10% by December 31st, 2015, you know, so that might be the way that you state that, uh, that objective. Quality assurance uh, asks, are all state and federal regulations being met, compliance being met, accreditation being met? Outcome evaluations are any evaluation uh, measuring the rate of success of a program using reliable and valid metrics. Client satisfaction studies are sometimes put underneath the category of outcome uh, evaluations. Uh, they tend, uh, they try to understand the client perspective. It's an inexpensive, easy way to uh, interpret and can be implemented quickly, shows clients that you care about them. But there are problems with satisfaction studies. They don't actually measure outcomes. Results tend to be skewed to, toward who answers and who doesn't answer. Uh, participants' biases, lifestyle, and culture cannot be controlled for in client satisfaction studies. Cost analysis evaluations, uh, the, the ultimate breakdown with this comes down to efficiency versus effectiveness. Effectiveness is doing the most, which is, tends to be the micro perspective, and efficiency is doing the most with the least, which tends to be the macro perspective. Cost effectiveness and cost benefit programs must show that it, you know, it is most effective at the least cost, meaning it, it is the most efficient. And efficiency then uh, turns savings into growth. It demonstrates a good use of resources with minimal waste. Cost effectiveness analysis um, takes into account the cost of a program in relation to outcomes. So you might take uh, X number of dollars to educate a child until, until they graduate from high school. Cost benefit analysis then uh, takes societal benefits into account 
and it sort of asks how much did we save by having a child graduate uh, and not be on welfare. In conducting a cost-effectiveness analysis, you're defining the program and its outcome indicators. Goals and objectives are clearly defined. Then you're computing costs, uh, calculating all program costs, personnel, technology, overhead, etc. Collect the outcome data, then you analyze program data. Then you compute cost effectiveness ratio. A cost effectiveness ratio is a total cost divided by the outcome. So you might have $275,000 divided by 48 clients. That's $5,729 per client. Is that good? I can't tell you whether or not it's good. You're gonna to have to determine that on your own by comparing your program to similar programs during a similar time frame. And you're performing a sensitivity analysis as well to make sure that you know it, sensitivity analyses help us decide what approach we should use in providing services. It's not enough just to be effective. It's not just to, enough to be efficient. It's important also to be sensitive to the community that you're working with.